What is up everyone, this is Too Slow. This is gonna be my re reply video or my response video to Dona Media's up to speed on the Toyota Corolla. Um, I've been getting a lot of DMs about when I'm gonna do this um, reply video, response video, just like how I did with um, Scotty Kilmer's um, why you shouldn't buy a Toyota Celica video. <laughs> just ridiculous, but you know, I'm not gonna lie. Dona Media, I don't hate them. I don't hate them. I enjoy watching their content from the high low video series to the every Tuesday, the bumper to bumper, because I get to see how these cars are, or how they look like in the inside and whatnot. So I don't hate Dona Media. I don't. I actually enjoy, as I said, I enjoy their content. Don't hate anyone. James Pumphrey, he's cool. Seems like a cool guy. I like him. He's cool. But I just can't look the other way when they just left out so much information about the Toyota Corolla. Um, let, let's play the video, let's play the video. I'm gonna lower it a bit. Forty years before Initial D, there was Chassis Initial E, which is gonna be talked about by Initial Me, J-E-P. Yeah, I'm talking about the most popular car in the history of the world. You ever heard of it? The world? It's flat and hollow. Here's everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Toyota Corolla. So this little intro right here, I like it. It's, it, it's cool and all, but... If you look back at the MR2 up to speed video, they had like the, during this this um, opening song, whatever, they would have like different clips from different YouTubers and whatnot. And funny enough, the MR2 one has, you know, who's um, face or red MR2 doing a flyby. But just kind of thought maybe if they see this video, maybe they could go back to that style of opening intro. <laughs> NOS Energy Drink uh, commercials. That's how majority of YouTubers nowadays survive. Um, they get sponsored and they have to run a little ad. Um, I've tried NOS. It is not that great. Um, not that great. So let's see if I could just skip over this. Let's see. Okay, it looks like it starts right here. The idea of the average Japanese person owning their own car was pretty far-fetched. Most Japanese auto manufacturers were making cars that only middle class and wealthy people could afford to buy and maintain. But AEG Toyota. So I'm going to stop the video here because they did their homework really well for the for the Corolla's um, first part of its life. Shut up. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> So, Dota Media did their homework. They have an excellent, excellent beginning story of the Toyota Corolla. So, I'm not going to play it here because I have nothing to judge of the Corolla. I actually have to judge after the AE86, which is, um, if we fast forward a bit, gonna, I'm pretty much going to skip the whole thing because I have... I have no like issues or like complaints through that. So if you want to go see that video, go see it. It's it's actually really good. Um, let's go. Okay, that's the seventies. Looks like. Okay, it looks like around the eight minute mark is when they start talking about the AE eighty six. Let's see. Collar discos came with Saturday Night Fever. There was the SR5 liftback. The that little crown nice. made big waves with American consumers, but Toyota didn't just rest on its laurels. They kept developing, kept tinkering, they kept working. <laughs> commercials from back in the day. In 1983, they released the AE80, which was more commuter friendly and way boxier, which was the yeah. shape du jour of the 80s. Mm -hmm. Completely new chassis allowed for more interior space by transversely mounting the 1.6 liter engine and changing the car. But I don't know why he sounds all disappointed when he says that they went to front wheel drive configuration. There's 
a lot of fun front wheel drive cars. Um, Corolla has a couple. Before you get your rear wheel drive pants in a twist, Toyota realized there was still a need for an enthusiast Corolla. Instead of wasting R&D on developing a new rear wheel drive coupe, Toyota took a page out of Eiji's book, took the old SR5, yep. turned it up to 11, and the AE86 was born. Anytime someone says Corolla, actually, it sounds probably a little bit too bright on me. Let me see. Okay, that looks a little bit better. The car featured the legendary dual overhead cam 4.8. Typically, when people talk about Corolla, this is the first car they bring up, the AE86. Which revved higher than a Winkle engine, eating up fun dip without the stain in a 2400 pound. You don't have to be Maddie and Daddy. Okay, and everyone knows for what the 86 is. I could literally talk about the 86 for 12 minutes and then again for 11 minutes. In fact, I already have, so check it out. As the 80s came to a close, Saichiro wanted to revamp the Corolla again. And since the Corolla was selling so well in America, he killed off the coupe and won. Yeah. Um, he did, actually, no, he did not kill the coupe. What are they thinking? <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, they killed off the coupe in America, but he totally forgot about the AE92 Corolla GTS, which has the 4A GE. Um, I believe, I don't know my, my color tops, but I believe the, the second generation was the red top. So the f the first generation from the f from the A from the Corolla GTS rear wheel drive that has a blue letters on the top, which is the first gen. Then the second gen was the one with the red letters on the top, which is what the AE ninety two had. It's it's a it's what the Corolla GTS was a rear wheel drive of, but in front wheel drive configuration. I've driven one. They are fun cars. Don't diss on them, James Pumphrey. Um, they are really fun. Really nice. I like them. Focus on making an inexpensive luxury car that can eat up daily commutes. So I don't like that they skipped all of AE 92's um, glory days and whatnot. But I'll talk about it in a bit. Directed to chief developer Dr. Akihito Saito was simple: make me a mini Lexus with a starting price below ten grand. Mm -hmm. After spending a day crying in the shower and then out of camp, Dr. Akihito set to work and developed the E100. The new Corolla was way bigger. In fact, it replaced the Camry as Toyota's compact vehicle in their lineup. Dr. Akihito also made the new Corolla look super futuristic. The seventh gen was not bad. Panels and making all the edges curved for a more seamless design. Americans freaking love the new Corolla. Surprise, neighbor! I just bought a new Corolla wagon! Even people who only bought American cars loved the E100. They just bought a rebadged version called the Geo Prism. You remember Geos? GM basically went to a Japanese Come on. American. My car had wings. Steady, though. Here we go. Of the X-Men. The interior looked like a freaking fighter jet. Mm -hmm. If this car had wings, it would fly. Compact Corolla continued on through the 90s and 2000s with steady, though... So you just skip the 7th gen and 8th gen Corollas. You skip the 8th gen, which had full TRD packages available from the dealership. The TRD Corolla for the 8th gen. You skip all that. Had muffler, had a lip kit, had wheels. I'm like, okay, I kind of get... Because it to me, it sounds like the video he's trying to go with... US only um, Corolla because they didn't drop the Levin and Treno nameplates in um, all over the world. Um, I believe the Japanese had, they still have the Levin name going up to this day, but I, I'm pretty sure they dropped the Treno name. Treno, Treno, Treno. Pretty sure they dropped the name already, but the Levin one is still going. It's still going. I don't know what they're talking about, but he completely missed all that out and i don't think he's just strictly 
just talking about American cars because he has the up to speed on the GTR. So if he were to just be talking about US, then on that up to speed of the of the Nissan GTR, he would just talk about the R35, not all the other ones. So I'm just going to say you've left out the AE101 and like all the other ones with like the silver and black top four AGE models, like left it all out. It's entirely sexy improvements. Honestly, they're pretty boring, but then they're not. They're not boring cars. They are not boring cars. We Americans just didn't get them, but overseas they were still there. They had a supercharged Corolla GTS. Or, no, it's, it was supercharged Corolla GTZ instead of GTS. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> love it. Okay, so this is a 4AGZE engine. The Z means turbocharger. Uh, Toyota didn't make a, an awful lot of, I'm sorry, supercharger. And Toyota didn't make an awful lot of supercharged engines. And then the supercharger version of this is really going to give it a lot more of that low down torque that the 4AGE is missing. Because in the, if you guys don't know, on the engine block name, um, you have the 4A G Z E. So G meaning performance, Z meaning supercharged. Now you know. the first Corolla XRS. The XRS featured the Yamaha collaborator 2ZZ. This is what the Corolla should have been like. This right here to me is a really good competitor to the 8th Gen SI. The 8th Gen, yeah the 8th Gen SI had LSD but if you kind of think about it the 4 door SI with the XRS were kind of neck to neck in a way. Yeah the SI was the better car at the end of the day but they were marketed for like you know, competition. Engine would grab the 7600 RPM. Wrong. <laughs> and created 170 horseshoe crushing clippity clops in a Corolla. C60s don't like that. Just letting you know, don't do burnouts on your C60. They do not like that. You do that to them, they'll pay you back. <laughs> C60s are weak. They're weak. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're weak transmissions. And apparently, it was all you can drink sake day at the Toyota parts department because they paired it with a six speed manual transmission from the Celica GTS and the Lotus Elise. Yep. Lotus Elise had a C64. Just letting you know. Didn't do his homework. The same gearbox from an Elise in your. It kinda is, but. At the end of the day, it's a C64 and it's not the same. Corolla. Toyota quickly sobered up, realized their mistake, and discontinued the car after the year. Then, you know, GTS wheels on the XRS look nice. They brought back the XRS a year after that, but it was a shadow of its former self. The top of the line XRS model has sportier handling dynamics and more get up and go. With larger tires and wheels, structural enhancements, and tighter steering, it feels more agile around the corners and doesn't suffer much of a ride penalty. So, he left out 
the Matrix. <laughs> if you look at the manual or the owner's manual for the Matrix, it says Corolla Matrix. In 03 and 04, Toyota had the supercharger um, available as a dealer um, option for the 03 and 04 Corolla and Matrix. A supercharger for your Corolla Matrix that you could go to the dealership and ask them to install for you with warranty if they install it. Where's this Toyota at? Where is this Toyota at? The Corolla was back to being boring again. I say boring, but I don't mean boring in a negative way. Reliable, predictable. At the end of the day, the Corolla is not like, it's, it's just a reliable car. It's a car that your dad or your mom passed down to you, your grandma passes down to you, you pick up because you're gonna go be delivering pizzas. It's just a practical car that doesn't need much work. And it's just reliable. It's hard to grenade a Corolla, honestly. Comfortable, comfortable. You ever take a good look at a Corolla? It's just, you know, it's a car. Just because something is boring doesn't mean it's bad. In fact, a lot of times boring stuff is good. I mean, water, water is boring. The Corolla is not boring. It's not a boring car. You can make it look nice. It's just, I guess, Toyota Media is more up to like fast cars and just cars with turbos, or as he calls it, tur turb skis, or what does he call it? But we gotta drink it every day. Here's what being boring has helped the Corolla to achieve. As of 2016, Corolla has sold over 44 million units, the most of any vehicle ever. If you were to attach every <laughs> Corolla that oh has gosh. been sold, bumper to bumper, it would wrap around the earth five times. And I'm not talking about pole to pole. I'm talking about the fattest part, the equator. That's over 120,000 miles of Corolla. In fact, when Corolla celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2016, they were averaging a sale every 15 seconds. Now the Corolla is trying to rebrand itself again. The 2020 model comes in a hybrid trim, just in case Toyota fans don't want to buy one of the four Prius models available. And the new ad campaign suggests it's great for people looking to have 45 seconds of uncomfortable hanky panky in the back of a compact car. That but commercial was horrible. Really, it doesn't matter how the Corolla is advertised because the Corolla is consistently a great car. And when we were writing the script, I left out the Tom's new Corolla XSC with the whole body kit on it the thing looks so nice they i'm, I'm just sad that they didn't mention not one bit toms <laughs> not one bit did he mention toms toms did so much aftermarket for corolla or is it really aftermarket i thought like toms was more like a division like what trd is just I've, i feel like toms is just more jdm is is you know, they're more JDM because TRD was American. Well, really both, but TRD was only was available in America. And I don't think Tom's was. I don't think Tom's was, but I mean, everyone imports stuff. So the fact that he didn't even bring up Tom's, that, that did he even bring up TRD? I don't even think he said, T I don't think he ever mentioned TRD in this video. I was surprised that the Corolla was the most popular car of all time. I thought it was the Volkswagen Beetle, which turns out is number two. Beetle died. I don't know if the Corolla ever will. Have you seen the new Beetle? They're fucking ugly. <laughs> Look, fact is, he can. This episode was completely like lazied out after the AE86. So much content was missed out. As I meant, as I was saying, um, Corolla. They, um, Tom's did a lot of aftermarket support for them, and t a lot of stuff TRD also did. My eighth gen Corolla had a TRD body kit, the TRD lip kit, the TRD quick shifter, TRD front strub bar, TRD muffler. <laughs> TRD lowering springs. Like, I had a lot of TRD parts on my Corolla. Like, 
come on. And at one point, I had Tom's side skirts. The fact that he didn't bring mention any of these up, like, God, it just makes me sad. <laughs> and he didn't mention about the the Levin and Torano um, front wheel drive versions of that we didn't get, in, but overseas got them. They had black top and silver top for AGE um, engines. Some of them came supercharged as well. Those things, like, I personally haven't driven the silver or black top 4As, but, I mean, if the older one is already a nice engine and leaves a smile on your face when you're driving the Corolla GTS, pretty sure those are going to be a little bit better. <laughs> and I really do want the AE111. Those things are so nice looking. <laughs> Like the fact that he didn't just talk about it, not even one bit. The Corolla, the the Levin nameplate's going, it's going, it keeps going. Um, it's it's just it's just a lazied out episode, honestly. So, you know, like if you guys made it this far to the video, because I know I can see that it's already a really long video. It's just if Dona Media is gonna be doing these type of videos, they they gotta do a little their homework a little bit better, because. Uh, this isn't the first time um, this isn't the first time I caught them screwing up in the Lotus um, the Lotus up to speed um, they call the 2ZZ the 2ZZ FE <laughs> holy crap oh my gosh and they also did a mistake on the Celica up to speed they said the GT revved all the way up to like 9000 and um, some people are saying no he's talking about the GTS he was talking about the 140 horsepower GT. That's what he said, and then he said, which ran all the way to 78 and blah, blah, blah. Go back and watch it, if you don't believe me. Go back and watch it. But that's my response to this video. Um, it was lazied out, but the whole first, the whole from the first, the, from the beginning to the 86, that's a good fit portion of the up to speed on Corolla. That, the, all that was good. After the 86, they just said, ah, screw it. We don't care about the Corolla. It turned front wheel drive. Who cares about it? That's literally what they did. That's what they did. James Humphrey, you're a cool dude, but whoever's doing all the research for your videos, tell them to do their homework a little bit better because they got to they gotta see. Honestly, that, that that's a C in my book. <laughs> Here I am grading like I'm a sword teacher. No, but that's it. I'm, I'm done. I'm done talking about it because I still have to do another another video on the. So you want to buy a Corolla video? That that's 14 minutes of just over and over and over of what a Corolla is. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil it. I'll wait. I'll wait. Thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far.